What is going on everybody? Logan Manzanares here and today we're going to be talking about how I went from $50,000 in debt to financially free in less than four years and I'm going to show you how you can follow this exact blueprint and so no matter what situation you're in, whether you're in debt, whether you have a positive net worth, whether you want to get to $1 million, to go to $10 million, whatever it may be, I'm going to show you how you can become financially free as well. Before we get into this, if you like what you're hearing here, I want you to smash the like button, subscribe. I want you to tell your friends about this because ultimately this is, we're just getting started, man. We have lots of cool videos, lots of cool content to provide. Uh, so please share it. The more that you share it, the more that it uh, lets me know that you actually like to hear this type of stuff. So let's go ahead and let's dive into it. So um, first thing, before you want to become financially free, you must know, the first thing, you must know your numbers. Like what is financial freedom, right? You must know your numbers. So what is that number to you? Uh, what is financial freedom? And so for me, here's my definition of financial freedom. For me, it's I want to do what I want with who I want. With I want, with with whom I want, as much as I want, right? That's my financial freedom, right? That's what I want to do. Freedom. It's actually freedom. That's what it is to me, right? Your your definition probably different. So uh, in order to do that, you actually, actually must know your numbers. Like, what are your numbers? What does freedom mean to you, right? And so for me, when it came to numbers, it was I wanted to create enough cash flow from passive investments or relatively passive investments, something dependable, reliable investments that regardless if I worked, no matter if I showed up, no matter if I got sick or whether I didn't want to show up to the, to the office that day, that I would still be able to create money day in, day out to not only cover my bills, cover my living expenses, but also have a little bit left over to feel good about myself, right? Um, and so that's what financial freedom is to me. And so in order for you to do that, you must know your number. Like, what is that number for you? Is it four thousand dollars a month? Is it five thousand a month? Is it ten thousand dollars a month? Whatever it is, like you must know that number. That's the first thing, because without a goal, anyone will get you there. That's the first thing to know. Okay. Um, and so then, once you actually have that goal, so let's say it's five thousand dollars a month that you need to make, create a plan. So what do you need to do in order to create that plan? Okay. And so again, for me, it was cash flow from real estate. This could be this could be businesses for you. This could be maybe you have um, some amount of money in the bank. Uh, like whatever it is, right? For me, it just made sense for it to be cash flow. Like I'd rather like. If the old adage of like, would you rather have like have someone give you a million dollars, or would you rather have ten thousand dollars a month for the rest of your life? Like, which one do you prefer, right? And most people would say, well, I'd rather take ten thousand dollars a month because it's consistent forever. Whereas, whereas million dollars, like, it could eventually run out, which is what most people think of when it comes to creating a safety net or creating financial freedom. Is this nest egg? Well, you know, nest egg aside, I'd rather have cash flow, right? And so, have a plan. So for me, it's like, okay, if I need ten thousand dollars a month, then I could have five. Um, if I had, if I was cash flowing five hundred dollars from each of my investment properties, how many would it take me to get to Ten thousand dollars a month would be twenty properties. So I can make twenty properties on average five hundred dollars cash flow, and I can create ten thousand dollars in reoccurring cash flow every single month. Boom! That's your plan, right? So you need a plan, okay? That's like this. Uh, and then here's actually the most important part. This is the part that nobody will tell you, right? Because they think that okay, once you create financial freedom, that's it. That's the holy grail. That's just a start. That is literally just a start. That is just like step number one. Once you achieve financial freedom, then what? What are you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with your freedom? What are you do with your time? What are you do with your money? What are you going to do with your energy, with your attention? Like that's actually the real goal, right? And it, when you actually understand what that goal is, it makes the first goal seem like not as like not as big of a deal, not as, not as important because ultimately money is just money, right? The whole point of having money is to use it for what? It doesn't. It's not just to sit in your bank account. It's not just say, hey, I'm a millionaire. It's to use it to progress your life. It's to progress your mission. It's to it's to grow. It's to contribute. Like that's what money is for. So you must know what that is for you, right? So you must know your life after financial freedom. Probably the most important piece of this whole equation. Okay, so. Uh, let me talk about some of our deals and how we end up becoming financially free. It's in 2017, right? 2017, um, I was about three years in my business, and my, my wife at the time, she, she had my girlfriend at the time, Katie, she uh, really wanted to buy a house, right? She wanted to buy a house. For me, I was like, no, like, it's a distraction. I'm just really focused on my business. Like, you go do your thing. Um, like, I'm really focused on my business right now. And so she did all the work, got approved, went to the bank, went to the, all, the, all the classes, learned how to buy her first house, right? And she actually tried to buy the house that I lived in and got under contract and everything, and then it ended up being some issues with like mold or something in the house, right? And so she actually didn't end up closing on the house, which had to be a, one of the best things ever because then it led to uh, the opportunity of where her, her stepmom, uh, her, her dad's wife, reached out to her because she had asked her, like Katie had asked, asked her some help and got her set up. And um, she actually had this condo that her stepmom had bought in 2007, 2008. It's like right when the crash happened, got the pins on all, had it paid off. And she's like, you know what? I see all the work you're doing. It's like, what if you, what if you want to buy this house for me, right? This condo. And so I remember sitting in the living room with, with her name's Esther and, and Katie's dad and having a conversation. They were basically telling us how they were going to sell their finances house to us. And we're like, okay, cool. That's awesome. Like we have, I think we put down $2,000 and we got into an awesome house. We just got like at market value, which, which, which was totally fine. And, we, and she basically became the bank. So we paid her interest. Um, and then she had, and we have like a balloon payment that um, we had to get all paid off in like eight years, I think is what it turned out to be. So it's awesome. So that's the way she got into our first property. Um, and so that's like, that's sort of how we got into our, our very first pro our property that was, we got into like May 2017. 
Um, but like right before that happened, like I said, I was really focused on my business. And this was like one of the turning points in my business happened right around the exact same time is I actually met my, my business mentor, Alex, right? I met him through a Facebook ad actually. And um, man, within two days, he had me on Katie's floor in the house that, she, that, that we were currently, or that, that she was currently renting and told me all about his, his amazing program and how he was gonna like basically fill my gym up in 30 days. And keep in mind, like I've been in business for three years up to that point, like I had just struggled to get by. I just had barely broken even. I'd made about, man, I think about $100,000 combined between all three years, right? So just literally just barely getting by. And so he was somebody's gonna fill my gym up like in 30 days. And I was like, man, I'd, I'd spent three years just getting 30 clients. Um, and he told me, I was like, there's something about him that's really connected with me. It, it really resonated with me. And then he told me the price of the program and my heart just like sank. Like, he's like $10,000. And I was just like, whoa, boom. Like, I sat there and I was just like, this is like a make or break decision. It's either yes or no, do or don't. It's like, should have got the pot kind of, kind of, uh, kind of mentality. And ultimately I was just like, I said, screw it, let's go, right? Let's make it happen. Like, I need, I need something, right? And so I, I hustled right away, uh, went to work literally. Like, I got it that afternoon. I got access to his program, got it all set up. Within two and a half days, I had, I had the whole thing up and running. I was selling. And by the end of that next week, like literally not even like seven days in, I had got 30 new clients and I had already made back that investment I gave him plus a lot more. And within my first month, I did over fifty thousand dollars. Right? It was it was insane. It was like completely life transforming. Um, but everything like led up to that point. Right? Like I had been hustling for three years to try to learn the business, try to learn everything. I, I just didn't know how to market, how to sell, how to get new customers. So that really like took us off, and the business exploded. Right? Right as we got into our very first investment property, which was awesome. Which honestly, it wasn't an investment property. It was just it was actually a liability because it was our house that we were paying for every month, and nobody else was paying for it. So, uh, but we got into some real estate, which was great for basically no money down, like like two thousand dollars, which was great. Um, and so. Fast forward about two years, we actually didn't buy our true, a true investment property for two more years, right? Until summer 2019. And so our second um, property, our first investment property was actually a foreclosure. So my real estate agent, we had been chatting for, um, yeah, like, like we had connected and I basically told him what our plans were and he had basically been putting in offers and he even found this, this foreclosure off HUD actually. And we had put offers in and we actually had put offers in for like two or three times, which over the course of like five or six months. And they just kept on like declining our offers. We just kept on like, you know, offering low, they said no. And they said, actually, we, we take this price. We're like, okay. Right. So we ended up paying, uh, I think $240,000 for that property. And it was valued like 280. So we got like a $40,000 equity, which was, which was a nice little bump, right? Like right away. Um, and so that was, we, we learned our very first, we got a very first investment deal. And on that one, we literally put down straight cash on me. Like it was, it was not creative whatsoever. It was just like a, a regular investment. We put down the, the standard 20%, actually I put 25% down there. So we put down $66,000, uh, the mortgage is 1247 and we rented it for 1975 and it cashed about over $700 a month. Um, so that was our very first investment property. And the whole time Katie was literally pregnant. Um, and no, no, she had just given birth, right? She had just given birth to, to Lane. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, she just given birth, sorry. Um, and so we were, and they were like us sitting there painting this house. Um, that's all we did, like, just house, it, it, we just painted it. But we were actually listening to a Bigger Pockets book on how to become a landlord, right? And so we're like, we're literally painting this house, learning how to become landlords as we're painting this, like trying to figure out how we do applications, how we need people in this house. It was, it was so fun, like, we, we literally had no idea what we're doing, right? Um, so that was in 2019 that we did that. And then our third home was, Again, just actually just, just, just very traditional. Uh, we just found it. It had no equity whatsoever. So we paid $250,000 for it and it worked worth $250,000. Uh, we put $50,000 down on that property and our mortgage was $1,275. We went to for $1,850, which cash flowed about $575. Right? That was August 2019, so it was a couple months later. Uh, so that was our second property. Um, so now we're about you know, $1,300 in cash flow, which means that like, we have, have $300 in cash flow coming in no matter what, whether I had to work or not, like, we have money coming in, which is pretty cool. Not a bad gig, right? Um, Next home was a house hack. So this one, we actually decided to move, right? So we found this, we found this uh, home that had like a mother-in-law apartment down, down below. So basically it had two units and um, man, it was right in the middle of town. It was a, it was a downgrade from our condo that we initially had bought from Katie's. I said, mom, like that, like, that condo was super nice, right? Like high-end finishes, um, three bedroom, two and a half bath, like really nice shower, tub, all this stuff, right? And so we decided to move into this house in the middle of, of, of Bozeman, um, right off 6th Street. And it was a dump, it was born, this, it was born. It was created in the 60s and man, it was rough, like it was rough. It had like red carpets. It had like nasty carpet. It, it, needed, it needed a lot of stuff, right? And we ended up getting a good deal on this house. Our, our agent, Jesse, he had like, he got us a good deal on it. Uh, like negotiated a good price on it. We, we, we ended up getting it for $450,000. It appraised at 480. So we walked into $30,000 equity right away, which is amazing, right? It, it was really cool. Uh, so that's how we got the first property. And it was cool because we actually were been able to rent the basement out as well to create some income to basically uh, offset the costs of our mortgage. Cause obviously it had to cost more than our original condo did. And so the problem though, with the, with the house hack, was that we couldn't rent the we couldn't rent the basement for what we wanted actually slowly so before I, I talk about the renting part of it so we, again, we put down thirty two thousand dollars on that home because we got a, a primary mortgage on it our mortgage was about 
$2,440. Uh, the rent on it, is, I'll, I'll kind of explain what the rent was on that. Uh, but the whole goal is us to basically be able to offset some of our, our living expenses, right? But what ended up happening is that we couldn't get the bottom, we, we couldn't get the base rented. Like we, we moved in to that house in February of 2020. And yeah, we just couldn't get rented. And then so what ended up happening is we just like, screw it. Like we can't get this thing rented. Let's just like, I always heard about this, this Airbnb short-term rental game. And in Bozeman, there's, there's lots of rules and regulations on it. But one of the benefits of being unoccupied is that you actually could, you could actually use this as a, as a strategy. And so we're like, okay, we, well, we, we have some extra furniture. We have some extra things that, that we can put down there. And so it really wasn't a ton of risk for us, but the reward was, you know, like I'd heard you could get a lot more for short-term rentals, basically like a hotel. Uh, and in worst case scenario, we could always just rent it long-term to somebody who wanted all the furniture, or if they want to take the furniture, we could just take the furniture back, right? So well, this didn't make a lot of risk to us. And so we put it on Airbnb. And uh, so this was February 2020. So like we actually got it up and running on March, like March, I think 9th of 2020. So it, maybe this is starting to ring a bell for you. So like March 9th, uh, literally as, as soon as we put it up within the first day, we had like six bookings. We're like, wow, this is freaking amazing. This is insane, right? And then the very next day is when literally the whole nation shut down, right? Everything shut down. And um, travel, you couldn't go, you couldn't go anywhere, all this other stuff. We're like, whoa, we just got hit. Like, we just got hit in the mouth. We literally lost all of our bookings. And so that was our, that was our, our start of Airbnb is uh, we had six bookings and we literally lost them all within 24 hours. It was insane. Uh, so then we started hustling. We're like, okay, like we need to get this place rented. And so we went on Craigslist and Facebook. We just like got people in there and we ended up that very first year uh, of Airbnb. We had that basement apartment rented every single day except for five days for the entire rest of 2020. When we started in March of 2020 until the December 31st, every single day but five, which is insane, right? Um, and that turned out to be great. And so not only did we just like make up some of our rent, we ended up basically covering our rent most months, plus a little bit extra, which was crazy, right? So basically we were living for free in Bozeman, which is, which is amazing, right? So that was, it was huge, right? Um, and so, yeah, that, that was our house hack that we did. And then, so part of this house, there was actually like a, there was, there's actually four bedrooms, right? And, this, and the fourth bedroom, we actually just turned into an office slash a gym that we used. And then all of a sudden, my mentor, Mike, who was someone that I had met years ago in a networking group, he came over and we're kind of talking about what we were like looking at trying to do. And he's like, he's like, this is actually its own unit. And so this fourth bedroom was actually a garage that they had turned into a bedroom. And so it already had its own access point. It literally had nothing in there. It didn't have any, it didn't have any utilities. It actually didn't have heat. You had to use like space heaters. Um, but it had its own entry point, right? It was about 350 square feet. It's like, this is its own unit. And so we started, then we, also we saw it, we're like, oh, you're right. And then so we decided to turn that into its own unit as well. And, um, you know, six months later, going through the city and all that stuff, we ended up getting this, a new studio part of our house as well. Um, and we ended up paying about $30,000 for that, uh, paid it all in cash. So it all paid for, and that thing averages about $2,500 a month. So all that $2,500 a month that comes from that property, is all cash flow. So like our basement part of basic covers our mortgage and now $25 from, uh, from that rental is all, is all free and clear because we don't own anything on it, uh, which, is, which is really, really cool. And increase the value of our house, which is even cooler, right? And so now our, our, our personal residence, cash flows is $2,500 a month. So now we're cash flowing about over $4,000 a month, right? From, from all our real estate, which is really cool. So this, that, that's been really helpful to get things rock and rolling. Um, and then, yeah. Um, and then basically the end of 2020, we bought our first bird property. So if you know what a bird property is, it's a buy, rent, rehab, refinance, right? And so we bought that with our, with our partner, Mike, actually, my, our, our real estate mentor, which is awesome. So we paid cash for that property. Um, and then we ended up putting about $100,000 in rehab into that, in that property as well. And it was cool because what we ended up doing with that property. So, so that one, we put down $330,000 $330, in cash. Uh, again, we had about $100,000. So our, our mortgage, we didn't have a mortgage. We decided for the, the taxes and insurance breakout about $266 a month. Um, and then... Um, we had rating it for $2,400, which is actually super low. We could actually get a lot more for that. So cash flow is about $2,134, um, which is, which is, which is insane, right? Which is super cool. Uh, and now since then though, we have basically refinanced that property. We pulled the money out of there and, um, we actually have put that money onto another deal, which we're actually in the process of getting, we're actually closing on that with the next couple weeks. But we basically pulled the money out of that one and put it into this new deal and that property, uh, I'll talk about numbers here and that one in a second. But before that, we actually did our first commercial deal in between there. We had our first commercial deal we, we, and we did creative partner financing. So what ended up happening is that um, Katie's mom was looking for, so this is again, this, this is separate from her stepmom. This is actually her mom. Um, she's, she's lived in Bozeman for a really long time, but she's having trouble just keeping up with her mortgage um, and she didn't want to be working anymore. And so we basically came up with the idea of like, hey, like, like you have a good chunk of equity in your house, but in order to buy something in Bozeman, like you still can't buy anything outright without having a mortgage payment and she didn't want a mortgage payment anymore. So we basically partnered up where she's like, I'll put the down payment down and you guys cover the, you guys cover the mortgage and then it's like a win-win. 
So this is what we decided to do. So but we, in order to do that, we had to find a property that was able to create some income uh, or have like two units on it. That way it would make sense. And so we ended up finding a, a live work unit here in Bozeman. The live work unit, uh, she lives upstairs. And then we have basically, we have the basement, uh, basement, they have the office and warehouse that we were able to rent out. And so that one we're actually in the process of re, we had in that property and so actually we'll keep the warehouse for our office but then we're actually going to rent out the the office space and we're actually going to turn it into a rental and so our goal is actually to make it so like that rental covers the whole mortgage everything so not only did we not get it, put any money down on our property but we also have our office uh for our business um in there for free so that's basically so while it doesn't show you contribute to the cash flow it basically creates a huge big expense so just saying you know, like our our, our expense for our rent right now is like well over two thousand dollars like almost close to four thousand dollars so if that brings all the way down to zero that'd be a big a big chunk of money saved so not all not all money is, is gained, but sometimes it's money saved as well. Uh, so that was a cool deal. And then, yeah, and then going into our, our first multifamily investment, which is what we're currently doing right now, uh, we, we refinanced that money from that flathead property we paid cash for. We got a loan on it, pulled that cash out, and now we're putting that cash down on um, on, this, on this new property. So this, this multifamily is it's a duplex next to, in, next to the college, right in the center of Bozeman, in between downtown and the college. It's an amazing, amazing location. Um, and that one is... The purchase price is eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we're going to put down two hundred thirty thousand dollars, which is again some of that cash from that that rehab. We'll, we'll go towards that, right? And so our mortgage on is going to be up thirty six hundred dollars. Will our projected rent on that is a really conservative twenty four hundred dollars per property. So forty eight hundred between two, which means we'll cash flow a minimum of a little over a thousand dollars a month. Uh, and it also has a third unit addition that we're that we also are going to add to as well, which will help you know it might cash flow another twenty five hundred or three thousand dollars on top of that. Um, and so our cash flow. Will be somewhere close to six thousand uh, dollars and then finally we're actually in the process of actually creating a uh, we're building a garage on our house so our house like i said is now cash on twenty five hundred dollars which is which is really cool we're basically living we're making money while living in bozeman which is if is a, is a crazy expensive town um but now we're also going to add a garage with an adu above it with an adu of course we're going to short rental it and then create another twenty five hundred dollars ish a month on top of that so we'll get somewhere close to you know eight thousand dollars in cash flow potentially ten thousand dollars if that third unit on the tracy deal goes through as well so that's what we're sitting at and our financial freedom number just saying that was well back like the five thousand dollars actually hit it uh last month which is really cool and so like i said the, the real goal is not just financial freedom but it's like, what do you do after that and so now we have big goals uh, but what do we do with our time what do we do with our money and like it, that's just the first stepping stone was was financial freedom it is not the goal right and i know that you probably sit there and you're like yeah cool you logan like you already hit it but like we knew before we hit that goal that it was not the goal like it was the first step the second step is the real goal. So what do you actually want to do with your life? What, 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 what do you want to do with your money? What do you want to do with like this, this gift of life? And that's really the goal to financial freedom is you being able to actually serve your purpose and live your life. And you know what? Just because you don't know exactly what that is today doesn't mean that you shouldn't be focused on it. You should be trying to figure out what it is. So I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Like, it's not like this crystal clear, like this one big aha thing. It's like, this is what we want right now. And when we'll get it, when we'll get it, it'll take us to the next thing and the next thing, the next thing. But you guys understand like the financial freedom is just the first step. It's not that holy grail, it's not the end of the world. Like having money is useless if, you're not, if you don't know what you're going to do with it right and so that's this is gonna be part one of our financial freedom series i'm gonna make another video on top of this so part two of actually like stuff i said how you can do it but i didn't know like do you, like, do I, do I, like do you want to hear that like do you want to actually get tactical and say here is how to lay out financial freedom here's exactly what you need to do here's some stuff i said tactics here's some here's some like some strategies here's some things that some skills you need to acquire in order for you to become financial free because they obviously it makes it sound really easy once they're even done but there's a lot of skills you have to learn along the way and so like number one like do you want those skills number two do you want to know how to acquire those skills and number three like is that some interesting is, the thing that interests you is how to actually become financially free and make a game plan for you. So if it is, let me know. I want you to like, comment, share, all the good stuff down below. Let me know that you want to hear the next part, part two in this video series. Uh, but hopefully that will resonate with you today. Uh, financially free in 2021. Let's go. My name is Logan Manzanares, and we'll chat with you guys soon. All right, and again, remember to smash the like button, subscribe, all the good stuff, and we'll chat with you guys soon. All right, bye.